You've set up a welcome sequence for your email. How do you get people into the sequence so that they can start getting those emails and learning about your business. This is the second in a series on how to use ConvertKit's automation templates to set up a welcome sequence in your email. The link to the other videos are below. So in that first video, we went through and we customized the content of our welcome sequence. Now I want to go back and look at the ways that we got people in. And in this video, we're specifically going to focus on sign up forms. Let's take a look. So here I am in the automation that I created in the last video using ConvertKit's automation template, specifically the evergreen newsletter template. And ConvertKit suggested using three different methods to get people into this automation and into that welcome sequence. A sign up form, a tag called newsletter, and a sign up landing page. In this video, we're gonna focus on that sign up form. We're gonna take a look at the form. We'll click on the form, and you can see that the form editor opens up in the right hand side here. And ConvertKit's automation template suggested a, a template for the form. This is the Pine template. Now you can change that if you would like. We'll click on Change Template. And ConvertKit has a bunch of different form templates. Some of them are very minimal. The Claire form in particular is very minimal. You may use that if your website is very stylized and you just wanna drop in the box. There's a bunch of different ones. Now, one thing that I have noticed that might cause you frustration if you're using ConvertKit's automation templates. I have found that switching between the templates sometimes doesn't go very well. Let me show you specifically what that looks like and how to fix it. So this style, this is the pine style, has a content background color. That is in the left-hand sidebar here. You can see there is a purple color that is being applied here. And when I go to change templates to um, a style that doesn't have that, you can see that that box is still frustratingly there, but there's no way for me to change or get rid of that color. So. If you find yourself in this situation and you really want to use a different template, but you're running into those problems, you have not customized anything yet in your template. So what I would suggest you do is instead come back out here and create a new form and you'll be able to delete this form. So let's do that real quick. I'm just going to delete this sign up form and I will add a new one. You click the plus sign here, click joins form, and then just click this create any new form or landing page. And when you do that, it will start you over fresh from scratch. You're not gonna lose any significant work, so that's just fine to do. Now, if you do wanna get back that form that you had, just click on sign up form here, just find that form in the drop down list and click add event. This will let me go back to what I was working on. I will go back to the template they suggested and we're back to this form. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and stylize this form. We'll speed that part up, but before I do, there's just a couple little things I wanna show you. So if your form style that you chose does not have, say, the first name field, here's how you add it. You click on this little plus button, and when you do, it will give you the option to add a new custom field. Now, I already, I'm gonna delete this because I've already got my first name field added here. When you click in it, you have the option to choose any of your custom fields. So let's say in addition to first name, maybe you wanna collect a last name. If you've already created a last name field there, you can add that in. Um, so I'll just choose first name, and here is also where I can stylize that stuff. Okay, I'm gonna speed through and update all of the styles. The things that you need to know specifically are just the element you wanna update, click on it, and it will give you whatever styles apply to that. Also, anywhere that you want to, you see this little plus sign, you can add in extra elements. Say you need to add in an ordered list or maybe you wanna add in a video, you can add those elements in just by clicking and then clicking the plus sign. 
okay, I've stylized my form the way I want it to look. Now let's adjust the settings so that when somebody signs up, the right things happen. We'll click on settings here. There's a few different things that we're gonna focus on here. We're gonna focus on general and incentive. In the general tab, we are going to choose between, so this is what happens when somebody fills out the form. What do they see? Either do they see a success message inside of the form or do they get taken to an external page? Usually that's like a thank you page. And so we're giving away a lead magnet here. That's a free PDF download that somebody gets in exchange for signing up for the email list. So on a thank you page, I might have that lead magnet embedded so that they could download the PDF immediately. That's one way to handle giving away a lead magnet. Um, if I wanted to do that route, I would click on redirect to external page and I would put that thank you page in. So I'm going to go with the show a success message. I'll edit it just a little bit. Okay. The next thing that I want to look at here is the incentive tab. Now, this is the email that gets sent after somebody fills out the form. If I were to go to check auto confirm new subscribers, ConvertKit is going to link me to an article where they talk about why you don't want to auto confirm new subscribers. So auto confirming new subscribers means the moment somebody fills out the form, they are subscribed to your list. That's called single opt-in. Best practice is to use double opt-in. Double opt-in means somebody fills out the form, you send them an email and you ask them to click a button to confirm. That makes doubly sure that the person wants to sign up for your list. Um, it's best practice in terms of it helps cut down on sort of spam fill outs. There are bots that will automatically subscribe people to your email list. It, it sort of cuts down on those. It also just gives you um, sort of the added assurance that the person wants to be on your list. That is really important specifically to stay in compliance with some various countries rules. Um, Europe has very strict rules. Uh, it's called the GDPR. Um, is the name of their ordinance around email marketing. Canada has very strict rules. The state of California is starting to come up with um, some specific rules around web traffic, um, and um, some of that may extend to email. So double opt-in is a good choice. We're gonna go with send incentive email. Let's edit that email real quick. Once I've edited my email, I'll hit save. The advanced tab here, uh, there's a few other things that you can tweak in here. I'm gonna go with their default settings for now. So I've customized my form. Now I need to put it on my website. I'll go up and click on embed. And there are a few different options that you have. Let's jump first to the WordPress option. If your website is a WordPress website, you can install the ConvertKit WordPress plugin, and that makes it really easy to add ConvertKit forms into your site. So that's one option, and I'll show you how that works. Um, if you're going with that option, this is the code that you will need to copy, and you just click on copy. Now, if you do not have a WordPress website, or if you choose not to use that, the two other options that we're gonna look at here are um, the JavaScript and the HTML embeds. JavaScript um, is a little bit lighter, a little bit easier, but some websites don't play nice with the JavaScript embed, and in that case, we'll fall back to the HTML option. Let's go see how those three things work. Okay, so I'm over on my website and I would like to put my sign up form right below this block of text. How do I do that? Here are our three different ways that I talked about. So this is a WordPress website, um, but some of, the, some of the advice I give you is going to be specific to WordPress. Some of it will work on any type of website. You'll just need to tweak it depending on how your website builder works. I am going to add in a new block and first we'll look at using the ConvertKit plugin. So I have the ConvertKit plugins installed. What you need, and let's look at this again, you need to drop in a short code and it says in here, use the following short code. I'm gonna copy that. So I will come back here, click on this plus sign to add a block and search for short code. Here's short code, click on that and just 
drop in the short code. I'm going to hit update. And then we will look at our website. And when I do that, ConvertKit drops in the form. Now this form looks just a little bit different. I actually have a different email account connected to this website. So this is a form from my other email account, but it looks very similar. But you'll see a couple of differences. Here is what it looks like um, on my ConvertKit Builder, and you can see some of the fonts look a little bit different. That's because my website is overriding some of the fonts. So that's why things are, might look just a little bit different. The way my website is set up, it's set to override embedded fonts like that. Okay, so what if we don't use the ConvertKit WordPress plugin? How do we add it in? I will come back here and delete this block. And now we are going to hit the plus sign again and search for HTML. And this will let me drop in code. Let's go back and get the code. So here is the JavaScript. We're going to try that first. We'll hit copy and we will paste it in here. Hit update. And now let's take a look. This is a good lesson for us. Look at that. Do you know why it happened? I didn't hit save. Let's go back and hit save. And you'll see it closes you out of there. Just click to reopen when you hit save. Now let's refresh. Okay, and when I refresh the page, you can see now it has updated. So that was a good lesson for us. Don't forget to hit save. Um, and again, you can see uh, the styles are getting overwritten by my website. That's just why it looks a little bit different, but it matches my website. So I'm okay with it. You can see that this is a little bit unbalanced. You can sort of mess with your forms after you get them embedded, see what they look like live on your website to see if you want to tweak. Maybe I decide mm, because I have this image right here, I don't need it in my form. Those are decisions you'll make once you see it live in your website. Now let's go to the final method, which instead of using the JavaScript, if you want to use the HTML, hit copy. And paste that in there into the HTML block. So again, we've just pasted this into an HTML block. If you're working with a different type of website builder, it's whatever method they have for adding code into your page, that is what you'll want to use. Maybe they have a little embed button, whatever that looks like is what you'll choose. And you can see it doesn't look any bit different. So what's the difference between adding JavaScript versus adding HTML? If you use the JavaScript option, when I come in here and I make tweaks, especially if I'm making tweaks to the copy in here, if I'm using the JavaScript option, once I hit save, there might be a delay for page caching, but once I hit save, that's going to automatically update on my website. But you can see, so let's see, this says subscribe to the SPI media email list. In the embed option, if we come way down here, we're going to see that copy subscribe to the SPI email media list. We are directly sort of transferring that information over. If we edit this form and we're using the HTML embed option, you will have to re-embed the form um, on your website after you make changes. So JavaScript means you don't have to transfer those updates to your website. HTML, HTML means you do have to transfer those updates to your website. Just some website builders don't work nicely with JavaScript, and so that's why the HTML option is available. So that's what you need to know about working with a form. When someone signs up for that form, the first thing that will happen is they'll get that auto confirm email. Once they take action on that, once they hit that confirm my subscription button in that email, then they will move on to the welcome sequence. In subsequent videos, we'll talk about using a tag as a trigger and a landing page as a trigger.
If you'd like to learn more about growing the audience for your email list, go to 100emails.com to sign up for SPI Media's 0 to 100 email challenge. That will teach you how to go from no subscribers to 100 subscribers in just three days.